The thick of it built its reputation on being the UK's gnarliest, shoutiest, sweariest political comedy drama. It featured a cast of civil servants, aides, politicians and spin doctors basically spending all their time combating the press and finding themselves barely able to get any actual work done. They were constantly embroiled in petty little scandals, internal squabbles, and organising their personal lives in a way that makes it so there's as little dirt as possible for journalists to pick up on. Its purpose as a satire was to illustrate just how shallow British politics had become, and while British politics remains incredibly shallow and more about personalities than policies, watching the show back now after the insanely turbulent shit that's happened in British politics over the last few years, it looks positively quaint. Series 1 and 2 and the specials are a bit harder to get into, and I'd say that Series 3 is the better jumping on point for newcomers. You don't need any context going in, and it's easily my favourite series. Series 3 introduces Rebecca Front as Nicola Murray, a nice but dim backbench MP promoted to minister at a largely pointless department simply because nobody else wanted the job. And she comes in with all these ideas and enthusiasm that gets burnt out immediately when spin doctor Malcolm Tucker has to come in and set her straight on how things actually work around here. Your kids aren't allowed to go to a private school, Nicola. You're not allowed a nice chair. Every aspect of your life is now owned by the state. The press will go after you for anything. We've got to keep everything in a very delicate balance in order to keep the governing party in power. That is the only thing that matters. It was incredibly fun watching these characters get absolutely apoplectic about petty matters that seem silly to people on the outside of politics, but to people in power, a pun headline in the sun about Nicola attending a sack race at her kid's school is like this mortal wound that her career might not be able to withstand. So the press are after Nicola because her husband is involved in a PFI contract and it could be seen as a conflict of interest and she might have to resign over it. Then she's out campaigning in a by-election for a candidate called Liam Bentley and her accidental placement in front of a billboard makes it so she's standing next to the words I am bent. The series features lots of silly, light-hearted, minor political fuck-ups like that that Malcolm then spins with this very war-like language that makes out like this is the most important thing in the fucking world. I mean, it's like a fucking cancer ward. I mean, there are people there, they're fucking screaming at each other. They're screaming, you gave me this fucking disease. In every corner that I turn, there's another threat, Terry. It's all incredibly entertaining, but watching the thick of it back now is a very strange experience because its premise is no longer true. The reason I found the thick of it so utterly fascinating in my recent post-Brexit binge watch was that the environment it presents is now completely alien. All of the characters are so utterly petrified of minor scandals, and yet the last four years have proven that minor scandals don't matter at all anymore. Take this incident here from the last election where Boris Johnson hid from an interview in a fridge and everyone started making memes about it. This is like a classic thick of it premise where his advisors would be chewing their own fingers off waiting for Malcolm to shout at them about the damage this is going to do. But do you know how much damage the fridge incident did? Nothing. It did no damage whatsoever. Because nothing does anymore. Everything's been so tribal in recent years, mostly because of Brexit, and what that means is that people will usually vote the same way regardless of anything anyone says or does. So political figures can fuck up all the time, they can lie, they can cheat, they can be at the centre of scandal after scandal like they are in the thick of it, and nothing happens. And these people have learnt this lesson and they're not scared anymore. Political figures are no longer terrified of the public or the press because the last four years have proven that none of it matters. So I don't believe a spin doctor making a big deal over your kid going to a private school because, oh, how is this going to look? Miss High and Mighty Nicola Murray thinks the state schools aren't good enough for her daughter. Um, Malcolm, politicians can actually admit to having regularly taken Class A drugs and it does nothing. So there's been a massive immigration data loss because someone misplaced a memory stick. Big fucking deal. You've got scene after scene of aides sneaking around Malcolm Tucker trying to hide another fuck-up that he's going to explode at them over, but he's overreacting, really? I mean, he always was, yes, that was the point, but the overreactions to something petty used to be believable. I don't buy it at all now. The characters stress to the extreme over minor things in the thick of it for comedic purposes, but the world where minor scandals even matter at all is completely dead in the current political climate. 
It's almost cute watching the thick of it now. It was only 2012 when it ended, and yet the world it presents is just adorable. I mean, I thought my view of Malcolm Tucker would have changed because obviously Peter Capaldi has been in Doctor Who since, and it has changed, yes, but it's recent political turbulence that's done that, not Doctor Who. It does still give you the chills as you watch him snarl his way through his job, threaten people with extreme violence, and give this intense performance. Capaldi's performance as Tucker was so strong that playing an extremely popular role with all this history, like the Doctor afterwards, was never really going to have that much of an effect on the terrifying demeanour of Malcolm Tucker, but Tucker has been rendered more ridiculous than he was in hindsight because of what he's overreacting to when contrasted with what's actually happened in the real world of politics in the years since. Okay, so you see this guy here. This guy's name is Chris Grayling. Last year, when he was Secretary of State for Transport, he awarded a ton of public money for a ferry contract to a startup company that, guess what, didn't have any ferries. And also, said ferry company copied their terms and conditions page from a takeaway menu. This isn't a plot from the thick of it. This actually happened. And it didn't do any damage to the Tories at all. In fact, the government recently put this guy forward to chair an intelligence committee. This is one of the dumbest stories I've ever heard, but it really happened and no one resigned over it. No one sacked anyone, and it didn't affect the Tories' poll numbers at all. The only thing that did affect the polling was the Dominic Cummings Barnard Castle incident, but they've been doing shit like this and getting away with it ever since Brexit. Even ministers that have been sacked or have had to resign over scandals are back in the cabinet nine months later. Look at Pretty Patel, look at Gavin Williamson. There's nothing that could end a politician's career anymore. Calm down, Malcolm. No one's getting sacked. The public's just going to forget about this when someone else fucks up and we'll all just move on to that. This is why the thick of it's probably not going to get revived anytime soon, because really, if Malcolm was threatening to rip a guy's nuts off and stuff him down his throat over the stuff the show dealt with back in the day, then he'd be on fucking life support by now. Tell me, what stupid shit has Dominic Raab said this time? Oh. Oh, oh sweet Jesus.